In the Winnie the Pooh stories, Piglet had a trespassers will be prosecuted sign outside his forest home. It had weathered to the point where it read only trespassers W, and Piglet used to solemnly explain that it referred to his uncle, trespassers William, but the implied sternness was there. The gin industry now requires that this sternness must be deployed and be seen to be deployed against trespassers to protect the spirit designation for gin. Today I'm going to give you the background as to the primary authority partnership between the Gin Guild, a not-for-profit international body which represents members of the wider gin industry both large and small, and Buckinghamshire and Surrey trading standards, and to detail the spirit designation for gin and to show how that must, with vigour if necessary, be protected. So why is protection needed? They say a picture is worth a thousand words. This picture says so much. Products such as the cream egg so-called gin that I show here illustrate why industry vigilance and action is necessary. This 25% ABV delight is so wrong on so many levels. At less than 37.5% it cannot be described as a gin in any event, it is at best a gin liqueur. It is of course also sold in breach of the Portman Group Code. In the UK, alcohol marketing is subject to strict rules ensuring that alcohol promotion is socially responsible and is targeted only at those aged 18 and above, so use of sweet-based products which might appeal to under-18s is unacceptable. Plus it is something which will seriously upset Cadbury's and their trademark lawyers, even if the former have this year co-launched a celebration beer based on that confectionery. This one is such a blatant breach of the Portman Code and they have other products of a similar sweetie-based nature that we referred it to Portman for them to address. It may be a small player, and one which may be completely ignorant of the category requirements and regulations, but it illustrates the issue where brands are marketing completely unacceptable products. Even for those of you with a sweet tooth, who might be trying to find a sliver of compassion in your hearts to let this sort of thing run. No, no, no. Compassion is not appropriate. Our passion is for gin. If it's not gin in the bottle, it's not legal to put gin on the bottle. The relevant law, and it is law, and will remain so despite some seeking without justification to claim that it is unfair and that it restricts them from trading on the fringes of the category, is regulation number 2019-787 of the European Parliament. This was preceded in pretty much the same form by a 2008 version, and yes, post-Brexit, as to those elements in force on the 31st of December last year, they remain in force in the UK. The regulations have proved successful in regulating the spirit drink sector. The regulations state that rules applicable to spirit drinks should contribute to attaining a high level of consumer protection, removing information asymmetry, preventing deceptive practices and attaining market transparency and fair competition. Fair, reasonable, and fully justified by any reasonable reading of the detail. The regulations safeguard the reputation which the UK's and EU's spirit drinks have achieved both throughout the Union and on the world market. The rules applicable to spirit drinks constitute a special case compared with the general rules laid down for the agri-food sector and they were specifically written so as to take into account the varying traditional production methods for spirits and historical practices in use in the different member states. The regulations lay down the legal names to be used for spirit drinks that are placed on the union market in order to ensure that such legal names are used in an harmonised manner throughout the union and to safeguard the transparency of information to consumers. There were concerns from many in the industry as to the effectiveness of current reporting and enforcement at a time when trading standards are under-resourced and have many other priority demands on their services. There was a need for an effective direct route for the gin industry as a whole, for reporting and enforcement and more, as a lack of enforcement or delay in enforcement of what are long established regulations has meant that a number of unscrupulous or just plain ignorant producers have brought products to market to the distress of the industry and to the detriment of consumers. Thankfully by and large non-compliant products have infringed products from often very small producers. However, they have damaged the category and they do send out a very mixed message, both to consumers and the industry. The Gin Guild, a gin industry body, represents the principal gin producers and exporters in the UK, as well as many international brands. 
It was set up in 2012 to protect and promote the gin industry. It is the umbrella group for gin and represents the owners of well over 90% of UK gin sales by volume. With a good spread of brand owning members, both large and small, an ear to the groundswell and opinion of both gin consumers and those in the wider gin industry, the Guild is well placed to action solutions and to enable liaison with those members. Although not part of the original brief of the Gin Guild, such has been the scope and number of misleading products and the potential damage to the industry, its reputation and to the category itself, as well as consumer deception, the Guild has been required to extend its role. It has now taken on, as a key objective, a direct and proactive role in monitoring and enforcement of breaches. We will of course continue to provide consumer advice and industry information and education. Our aim is to ensure that gin does not compete with products described as gin, but which do not comply with the definition of gin, and to ensure that there is a level playing field between all products described as gin. This ensures compliance with the law and that customers are not misled into believing that a product is gin when it is not. Our primary authority partnership is proving to provide a responsive and timely response for the Guild and thereby for the gin industry. The joint work undertaken is seen as a tangible deliverable, providing a direct and accessible route to access regulatory advice and guidance and education, as well as addressing these category breaches. It provides an efficient channel to refer and receive feedback on industry concerns in the gin market, including sharing information collected by the Guild and its members about products believed to be non-compliant. The partnership is also supporting the industry by producing assured advice on key areas of industry practice, providing members who comply with that advice a material measure of protection from action by other trading standards bodies. The Gin Guild will now, however, provide an additional edge to help the work of this publicly funded enforcement body where appropriate, necessary or expedient to do so, by firstly offering to supplement and support their investigations in kind or with targeted financial backing for investigations, etc. And secondly, by working with the Guild's retained solicitors, following guidance from our primary authority, again where appropriate or where it is imperative to prevent non-compliant products from being sold, to ensure that urgent, privately launched, direct legal action is led and instigated by the Gin Guild and action via its retained team of solicitors. So why have these changes to the status quo been required? Ironically, it's due to the success of the gin industry. The gin industry has been successful in building consumer interest leading to increased sales, including interest generated by the growth in smaller distillers joining the established players. The new interest has been good for brands, with consumers looking for the next new arrival, new discovery, etc. But the interest and buzz has meant that competition is hard and brands new and old have had to work to promote and differentiate themselves from one and another. This has led to considerable pressure on the category envelope. It's led to a number of less scrupulous bandwagon jumpers, without a long-term interest in preserving the category, who arguably have either gone too far from the core category, or who are content to mislead consumers as to provenance, product, content, etc., and at times are prepared to label almost anything as gin, just to sell a product by riding on the coattails of the gin renaissance. It is surprising how many producers of products purporting to be gin, or to be like gin, but which are not, having first come up with an idea and then funded the product, the production, the marketing and more, either fail to do their homework and research, and then, whether through ignorance or deliberate act, launch and market a product in breach of the regulations. Withdrawing products and rebranding is a costly exercise. It can at best affect reputation and standing, and at worst can be terminal for a business. We have seen, particularly of late, the creation of all manner of new botanical additions to gins, gins with key fruit flavours, gins with high ABV offerings, and things like seltzers, RTDs, and no or low alcohol alternatives for those seeking an alternative but familiar beverage flavour profile. Two key areas, by way of example, that have manifest themselves as issues for the industry have been beverages launched on the back of gin, but which are not gin, which should not be masquerading as gin. These are the areas of no and low alcohol options, and the areas of gin liqueurs. It is hoped, as I say, that once it is realised that non-compliant products will be challenged and that Guild members and consumers alike can refer products of concern to the Guild, 
and can expect that those concerns will be addressed swiftly, involving our primary authority at the earliest stage possible, that there will be fewer prepared to chance their arm and their bank balance by frankly trying it on. Our campaign regarding these issues has, as you may well have seen, attracted both trade media and mainstream media coverage. Some of that coverage has typically been sensationalised by journalists, particularly as to the issue of competition with low or no alcohol beverages. We all like a good attention-grabbing headline, but boy oh boy and other gender options are no doubt available, they do try their very best to suggest conflict and pistols at dawn, which rather takes the Bridgerton imagery rather too far. So let me be clear, the Gin Guild and its members have absolutely no problem with adult orientated non-alcoholic or low alcoholic drink brands being produced. It's a growing area and one into which I anticipate many liquor brands will seek to dip a toe alongside their more well-known and alcoholic options. There is clearly interest and demand from consumers for such products. Non-alcoholic beverages should of course be available to adults as alternatives to alcohol. Such products should however be clearly identified and branded without wordplay or reference to existing defined spirit categories. Any new category and any new brand should make their way to market not seeking to build on or abuse established regulated spirit terminology. The key message is simple. There is no such thing as non-alcoholic gin, just as there is no such thing as non-alcoholic whiskey. Gin is a defined and regulated term protected under EU and UK regulation, and in particular requires a minimum ABV of 37.5%. At no time should a consumer be misled as to what is on offer or as to the nature and content of a product. These provisions are not sour grapes, if one can use an inappropriate metaphor, on the part of the gin industry, nor intended to stifle growth or innovation. The intention is to preserve the established and regulated terms for key spirits, and to ensure that they are applied exclusively to such products. The legal provisions are designed to ensure that the established spirit categories are protected and that non-compliant products do not trespass on known and defined terms to the detriment of both producers of the current spirit categories and consumers. The Gin Guild has already secured the withdrawal or remarketing of several no and low alcohol drinks and so-called gin liqueurs, incorrectly being described as gin. With over 83 million bottles of gin being sold in the UK annually, worth around 2.6 billion, this is a key category and one worth protecting. So if you see a non-compliant product, see it, report it, get it sorted. Gin lovers, that is your take-home message today. Thank you.